What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this Monday evening, August 3rd already, 2020, 807 p.m. West Coast time here in Northern California. And uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity to update out here. There was a uh, little bit of activity down in SoCal, also out in Oklahoma. They had a 3.4. Um, we can take a look at that here on a different little map here aside from the globe. Give me one second to get this switched over here. We're going to jump back to Yellowstone here in a little bit, but I want to bring up the latest USGS map here of 2.5 in a day. 2.5 and above as far as the magnitudes go here. And there's that little Oklahoma earthquake out there. Typical, right? Those folks out there in Tornado Alley do get uh, earthquakes as well. A lot of fracking activities out there throughout the region. Earthquake activity has calmed down um, compared to, well, obviously like last year that was pretty active out there. It seemed like there was earthquakes every day uh, within the vicinity. Now uh, we might see one or two once in a, once in a while. A little earthquake down there in uh, right around Pecos, Texas here. 2.5. A lot of fracking activities down there as well. Um, some minor activity out here at the southern end, the triple point junction here of the Mendocino Fault, the San Andreas Fault, and uh, well, that's kind of an interesting area right there. It's kind of, like I mentioned on that uh, triple fault section here, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Nothing big. A couple twos being reported right there with fairly deep magnitude, or fairly deep uh, levels there 20 kilometers and it looks like 23 kilometers as well kind of interesting activity because uh, we don't see a whole lot of deep earthquake activity specifically within this region so definitely something to keep an eye on uh, scooting down here to the south you can see that uh, 3.5 that kind of shook up some folks there near Anaheim and the uh, surrounding regions there is a couple specific fault systems out here they got this little one called the uh, Oh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to try to pronounce that one. You guys can see that on the screen there. Uh, looks like Peralta Hills Fault. Um, and also kind of close to the Ellisnor Fault. But directly where this one's at, I didn't see any specific uh, fault system there where that 3.5 struck. Uh, and they got it registered here three kilometers southwest of Yorba Linda, California. Eight kilometers below the surface quite a few folks did report filling it surprisingly but uh, you know look at all those responses right there quite a few folks uh, let's see let's go here and we can check out the uh, did you fill it reports here just for the heck of it um, where'd it go oh there we go yeah you can see quite a few folks a very highly populated region of course um, so 3.5 is going to be felt by many and many folks here and within the within the vicinity of Anaheim, Yorba Belinda, looks like some folks here in Santa Ana reporting that uh, earthquake as well. You know, for now, just a small little shaker there, but one day uh, it will be not so small in that region. Historical seismic activity, I mean, I don't think I have to explain this. It's right around the plate boundary of the North American and Pacific Plate. Um, been some big earthquakes out there in the past and there'll be some big ones out there uh, in the future but uh, for now pretty quiet uh, some interesting activity over here at Yellowstone National Park that I kind of want to cover and this activity is showing up in the northwest corner of the park here uh, specifically Maple Creek area uh, you can see let's go ahead and bring this page up I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here it's this little area Looks like it started around 21.30 UTC time, and it lasted for ooh, a good four to five hours, and it looks like it's starting to mellow out a little bit, but it's a really interesting um, activity here. I mean, the red lines, right, these red lines normally indicate registered earthquakes, such as this one right up here. That's a localized, a localized earthquake. Uh, almost probably directly over this seismograph station there in Yellowstone National Park. Um, sometimes we see ones like this. That's kind of a distant earthquake. Could be possibly something from Idaho um, or um, 
or anywhere. You know, just not a localized earthquake. That's what distant earthquakes look like. But this activity here is just blowing me away. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. You can see prior to all this rumbling, if you will, there was another localized earthquake. And then shortly after, we started to see the uptick in irregular type of uh, um, type of activity there. I did check the... Let me go back here. I want to get off of here. I did check a couple of the um, uh, GPS stations, the emissions, and also um, some other stuff, which I'll show you here on this map here in just a second. But I want to show you how this activity is kind of showing up on other... Let's see if I can get this to pop up here. On other stations within the park. You can see right here too, right? A lot of activity showing up. This is not weather related. Um, these right here look more like um, intense, very intense warming, you know, back-to-back -back earthquakes. Kind of like, it's hard to explain. It's almost like just some type of geothermal underground event. Um, and if it was magma or lava, it would... Uh, I believe it would be showing up on more stations and a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, intense, if you will. I don't believe that this is magma related. It could potentially be some type of hydrothermal activity underneath the ground. Maybe something to do with water movement, ground, you know. But it's just crazy looking. It's pretty crazy looking. I believe there um, either earthquake activity it increased concentration of a high you know spitter spatter of of swarming if that makes sense there right because sometimes when we see the swarms here in yellowstone it's pretty intense but this would be a, a majorly intense one if that was the case um so it showed up here that the, the main area is maple creek right over here um and a lot of these other stations are well they're tuned to not pick up too much activity like old faithful hardly picks up anything at all i mean nothing at all so that's kind of strange so you can't really rely on um each you know each individual station here but when you see them show up on a couple different ones and you realize that it's not just local interference uh like up here at hepkin lake region you can see that activity picking up as well and as i said this is not weather related it's um because it wasn't windy up there we checked the weather it was like two miles an hour all day up there so whatever's going on out there is registering on a couple different stations on the northwest corner of the park this region over here let's see what we got here i am not for sure what's going on with that that's just a looks like they may have had some type of uh adjustment on the instrument reading there to make it look like that but it's different that is different than the activity that we're seeing over here in the northwest corner folks so it's either geothermal some type of something going on there but it lasted for four to five hours so that's kind of strange we'll have to see exactly how the night uh you know what happens throughout the night the remainder of the night see if anything picks up uh in the region but yeah, it just kind of blew me away. Uh, the data that you can look at here, see where it went to. Uh, a pretty good monitoring page here from the USGS.gov website. There's the address up there in the corner, uh, USGS.gov volcanoes slash Yellowstone slash monitoring. Uh, gives you a pretty good overview of the Yellowstone National Park, including a lot of information when it comes to earthquakes, deformation, ground deformation. Um, hydrology, hydrothermal, and volcanic gas emissions here throughout Yellowstone National Park. And uh, I double-checked a lot of this stuff here. Everything looks normal. Water temperatures look normal. Um, and you can look at many different GPS locations and you can see that there's not at least, you know, maybe the, maybe this update tomorrow, but I'm not seeing any type of uh, irregular stuff going on there i mean all the daily temperature graphs are normal if you look at the weekly temperature graphs in well for example steamboat springs you can see and this is weekly where where, where we're at right down here no difference in temperature it just kind of kind of got its own little rhythm if you will of different uh temperature variations and this here is the monthly graph so 
it's got its little little deal nothing abnormal at least from you know from the norm and you can look at many different uh many different geysers out here and i think if we were seeing some type of increase in mag magma or or um underground movement we would see a different we would see something be changing with the uh, geysers and the uh, temperature readings and whatnot so yeah pretty cool website to check out if you guys want to do that um like i said usgs.gov slash volcanoes slash yellowstone monitoring and there's all sorts of cool information here it even shows the uh, seismic graph stations here individual ones kind of similar to what you see on the um, yellowstone thumbnails this is just what I showed you, right? But this is their graft uh, coming from their from their uh, from their website here, and you can see that activity in question there. About uh, like I said, four about four to five hours of interesting movement. I, you know, I still I believe it's a swarm, a very intense swarm of earthquakes there, just within that vicinity but we'll see what happens overnight see if anything changes folks so anyway um yeah there's a there's a unlimited amount of resources when it comes to looking at uh, uh data in yellowstone national park so check it out if you have time there's just too much to go over um in just one update video so uh, let's see other than that folks looking at worldwide activities go ahead and drop to a different uh, scale there there we go on the uh, earthquake 3d globe as you can see uh, well most of this activity all kind of like darker color rings here that means that this is going to be dropping off the uh, uh, globe here pretty soon hold on a second I forgot to set something here so this video might be hopefully not too choppy but I forgot to add something there. Anyway, gosh darn it. Okay. Latest earthquake 4.6 over here in this region of the world. It's pretty pretty quiet right now, folks. Not a whole lot of new earthquake activity aside from out here along the west coast and uh and this one four point six over here. Let me get the exact location for you guys. Oh yeah, western Azing. Somewhere out there. Yeah, it's uh, nothing major, just a little bitty quake. But anyway, um, yeah, I thought it would be pretty cool to mention that Yellowstone stuff going on. Just I've been watching Yellowstone for many, many years, and it's uh, it's definitely uh, does some weird stuff sometimes. It has some swarms, and sometimes it goes perfectly quiet, and then it does stuff like it did earlier. I mean, it's. Like I said, I don't believe it's magma or lava or any type of movement underground. Maybe hydrothermal, you know, but I don't believe it's uh, anything to worry about. But you never know. It's 2020. We still got a few months left. So anyway, folks, have a good night. I think I'm going to call it an early night. I just, uh, I'm tired of the heat, I'm tired of the smoke out here in California. It's just, ah, uh, blah. Blah is the word. So stay safe. Be prepared out there. Uh, make sure you have an earthquake plan. And no matter where you live at, even if you live in, uh, heck, who knows, everywhere, right? Have a good one, folks. We'll chat you guys another time. Peace out.